Hey guys, this is John from Tech7.net, and in this tutorial video, I'll be showing you how to get started with Carbide. So let's get started with a basic introduction here. This is the main window, and the screenshot provides you with an emulation of what your theme looks like. On the side here, we have all the menus and submenus that links you to all the changeable elements of the theme. See here, we have all the icons, and see here, we have all the highlights. Alternatively, you can click on uh, various elements on the screenshot itself, and it will take you to the submenu. I find this to be much more convenient when I'm editing uh, miscellaneous theme elements. Now that you've been acquainted with Carbide, we are now going to optimize a workspace. This is very important to improve theming efficiency and theming speed. The first thing I'm going to do is merge the layers window with the windows on the right. Chia. Then I'm going to merge the properties window with the elements window above. The other windows are miscellaneous and you don't really need them, but you can't really get rid of them. Sort of like Tails from the Sonic the Hedgehog games. This is actually the workspace layout I've been using since I've been theming seriously, and I have noticed a vast improvement in my theming efficiency. Even though it seems like a little thing, I highly recommend this workspace layout for any Nokia themer. Now we're going to assign graphic editors to Carbide. Simply click on Windows, Preferences, a window will pop up, expand the Carbide UI tree, and click on External Tools. Here you will see a bitmap editor and a vector editor. Click on Browse and locate the .exe file of the graphic editor of your choice. For instance, for the vector editor, I have chosen Adobe Illustrator CS4. Vectors, or rather SVG files, are the default image files for Carbide. The other files that Carbide uses are bitmap, such as bitmap, JPEGs, PNGs, and GIFs. This is a neat little trick because it allows you to double-click any image file from Carbide and it will automatically open in the graphic editor you have assigned. For instance, if I double-click the contact icon on the right, it will automatically open in Adobe Illustrator CS4. Once I have saved the file from the graphic editor, any kind of changes I have made will be automatically and instantly applied to the image file in Carbide. Neat, isn't it? In my opinion, this has got to be the most important step in setting up Carbide. So make sure you do it, or else I will find out where you live and hunt you down. Just kidding. Oh really? Now let's check out how to add third-party icons. Simply click on the third-party icons under the Carbide UI tree, and if you just started out, this list would most likely be blank. Applications themselves usually only have one UID, whereas folders usually have both a major and minor UID. So pay attention to that. Oh look, we got an icon request from Jason. He wants us to add music search. Okay, so let's just copy the UID here. Scroll up. Click New, type in the application name, I believe it was Music Search, paste the UID, and there we go. Now it's just been added to the list. So what happens if you have duplicate UIDs? Well Nokia or Nokia is very smart about this. Duplicate UIDs would result in a red text error on your list. This is very bad because duplicate UIDs would result in your theme not being able to export or render which will mean no one will be able to install and enjoy your beautiful work. It is very important that you make sure that you don't have any duplicate UIDs. This is to ensure a smooth theme packaging process. Okay, let's add the icon. When you add an icon via UID, it will show up in the icon list as a blank icon. Now you can either drag and drop an icon from a folder, an existing icon, or even an icon from another project. Like here we have uh, the handy shopper icon from another theme I've made. I can just double click and the icon will appear. Well that's it for part 1 of getting started with Carbide. I hope you guys liked this tutorial. This is John from Tech7.net and I'll see you guys next time for part 2. Bye!